In this video, I want to talk about the thumb carpometacarpal joint and its arthrokinematics and its osteokinematics. So we're going to use this little horse here that I stole from my son's room. But first, before we do that, let's go and look at the thumb. So the thumb carpometacarpal joint, or CMC joint, is located right here at the base of the thumb. And there's a variety of movements available at the thumb CMC joint. This movement in the sagittal plane away from the palm is in anatomical terms called abduction and then back toward the palm would be adduction or adduction. In the clinic it tends to simply be called a palmar abduction that is abduction in a palmar direction, and then the return motion would be adduction from palmar abduction. And then in the frontal plane, the other motion that we have is in anatomical terms, extension and then flexion of the CMC joint. The CMC joint right down here is what we're looking at. Extension and flexion of the CMC joint. In more clinical terms, what you'll hear in the clinic is radial abduction. That is abduction in a radial direction. And then the return motion would be adduction from a radially abducted position. All right, so those are the osteokinematics. Now what we have to figure out is what the arthrokinematics are, and that's where this guy comes in to help us. The CMC joint is a saddle joint, which means that each member of the joint, each joint surface, has both a convex and a concave shape, depending on what plane you're looking at. So let's look at our little guy here. You'll see this is a knight. He's missing an arm because of his valiant battles, and he is sitting on a saddle, of course. So let's figure some things out here. The horse's name is Trapezium, which means the knight's name is Metacarpal. So we have Trapezium and Metacarpal, and you'll notice that the horse, Trapezium, has a saddle, and that saddle is in fact concave in one direction, and then in the perpendicular plane, that saddle, or the horse I guess, is convex. So our horse, trapezium, is convex in this direction. and concave in that direction. Similarly, our rider, called metacarpal, <coughs> is concave in one plane. And then if you can kind of imagine if his front leg wasn't there, he would be convex in the other direction. If you kind of think about his crotch going, you know, around this way, it's convex. So the convex part of the rider, all right, the convex part of the rider fits into the concave part of the saddle. And the concave part of the rider fits on the convex part of the horse. Just like that. Get in there. Okay, so now you see how the two joint members fit together. The only other thing that we really have to figure out from here is which direction does the horse face? Because once we figure that out, then everything else will kind of fall together in terms of whether the arthrokinematics are convex on concave 
or concave and convex for any particular movement. So we have the metacarpal articulating on the trapezium. Now I need you to use your imagination just a little bit here. I know we have the valiant knight from England, but we're going to relocate him to the American Southwest. Somehow he's been transported there and he's marching through the desert in California or Nevada or someplace like that. And he is very, very thirsty. And his horse, Trapezium, is very, very thirsty. So as he is going through the desert on his horse, named Trapezium, they are looking for a source of water. Because he's out of water and he has this big black coat on his horse, he probably shouldn't have that, but anyway, they're looking for water. If you are looking for water in the desert, you're going to look for what? What's going to indicate water in the desert if you're looking around? You're going to look for something growing. And if there's a lot of water, you'll have big things growing, and those big things would be trees. And if you're in California and you see big trees growing in the middle of the desert, what kind of trees are they going to be? They're going to be palm trees. So metacarpal and trapezium are going to ride toward the palm trees to get their water. And that tells you how things are oriented. The horse, trapezium, is facing in a palmer direction. The horse is facing in the direction of the palm. I'm going to take metacarpal out here a minute so you can see that better. So in a sagittal plane around a medial lateral axis, the trapezium is going to be concave. Just like that, concave. Whereas in the frontal plane, or coronal plane, around an anterior posterior axis, the trapezium is going to be convex. Convex, just like that. And once you know that, you'll also know the shape of its rider, metacarpal, because the metacarpal is going to fit on the trapezium. And then you'll be able to figure out all of your arthrokinematics from there. So, for palmar abduction, or abduction and adduction, to use the anatomical terms, you're going to have your convex rider, metacarpal, on your concave horse, or concave saddle, trapezium. So that's for motion in the sagittal plane. Just like that. On the other hand, for this motion here, in the frontal plane, for extension and flexion, or radial abduction, the horse, trapezium, is still facing in a palmar direction towards the palm trees. And so now in this plane, for this motion, the horse, trapezium, is going to be convex. And our rider, metacarpal, is going to be concave. So for radial abduction, or extension and flexion of the CMC joint, to use the anatomical terms, we have a concave metacarpal moving on the convex trapezium. All right, I hope that helps you understand and remember the arthrokinematics of the thumb carpo metacarpal joint.